Hello everyone, you are welcome to the 14th episode of the Quick Civil Series for Beginners course. And then this is exactly the last episode of the of the course. So for those who have been following the course up to this position, um, this is the end point, all right? So um, basically what we will be doing in this episode is, first of all, we will be assigning the, uh, the support. You can see we have the pin support over here. And then at this side as well, we have our pin supports too, okay? And then you see we have our elements. We also calculate the force. Let me go to steel structure and let me click on show forces. Uh, well, there is no force here. You can see all the forces here, they are zero, but it's because I have not analyzed it, okay? So we go ahead and do the analysis and then we will do the design, all right? So um, let me just start from the beginning. I'll go to new project, click on yes. Um, let me just apply changes and then i'm going to import back the structure just as i did in the last episode so i'll just import my steel elements click on yes and then this is it um truss in the xf click on open then here we are all right i'll go to um my view and then now we click on grid line so that i can see the grid line all right i'll go back to steel structures um i think this skill is good enough all right so we have it like this now um after bringing in your model and the, the, the everything is here the first thing you have to do is you need to confirm if your model is perfect you understand you have to check your model so click on check trust modeling and then um fortunately we have no error you can see everything is doing fine there is no error message over here so um that is um, a good sign all right then you just need to do what you need to close it all right, so moving forward, the next thing to do will be to assign the support, all right? So I'll assign one pin support, and then I was, sorry, yeah, I'll assign one pin support, and then I'll assign one roller support. So that will make it to be a determinate truss, okay? You can also make it to be indeterminate truss. The program is still capable of doing that. So let's go, um, I'll start with the, um, with the support so i'll pick this beginning and then i will click this endpoint so we have a pin support added to this position if you click on this you'll see it over here clearly so this is a pin support added to that um that point so i have to add another uh pin support here so click on insert supports okay and then i will pick this position and then i will drop it in this position okay then you can see we have another pin support here and just as I've said, I will make one to be roller, all right? So I'll just come to support properties, okay? So this first one, it can be pin. And then the second one, let me make that to be roller. So you just come over here and then you see it here. Um, the reaction, the direction is upward, of course, it should be upward. So if you want to change it to downward or right or left, you can do that. So here, I'll change this to roller, okay? Let it be like that and then just click on close. So you see, this is now a roller support, all right? Whereas this still remain a pin support. So since the support has been added, the next thing to do is to have the um, the loading, okay? So I will show you two ways of how you can apply your, your load, all right? So um, definitely, we will not be having uh, a uniformly distributed load or a trapezoidal load here because this is a truss, okay? And that's the major difference between a truss and a, a frame, all right? So a frame, we can load it anywhere, but a truss, you can only load it at the joint, okay? So um, for this particular element, that means I'll be loading element 4, element 8, element 12, element 16, 20, 24, 28, and 32. These are the elements that I want to load, the elements at the top. And of course, I'm not loading them at the center, I'm loading them at the joint, okay? So what I have to do right now is I have to build up the point load for it you know because this is a roof beam you have to build load for the wind load build load for the dead load for the services for the insulation everything like that so you have to calculate all of these loads before you can you know assign a particular load to each joint okay so you can do that manually but of course this is not a manual design this is a software design and the software is capable of getting this load for you okay so you just build it up and then it will do the summation for you so come to build roof truss elements and then just as i've said i'm not loading all of these elements i'm just loading the 
the top chord which is element 4 element 8 element 12 16 20 up to 32 okay so those are the elements i want to load so i have to check all of the so i have to check all of those elements first so click on add loaded elements okay so right now i have to check all of those elements so check 4 check 8 check 12 check 16 check 20 check 24 check 28 and then check 32 then you click on ok then you can see all of those elements here sorry i clicked here so now that all of those elements have been checked you can go ahead and be you know um checking all of those elements that you do not need so for example the dead load so you see the dead load uh, when it comes to insulation we have 0 0.02 kilonewton for the pore line okay you have 0 0.09 for the services 0 0.1 for the steel sheet you know what steel sheet is you have 0 0.05 the bracing you have all of this then the total dead load you have this the total live load you have this the miscellaneous load is 0, 0, 0. okay so um you can see your imposed load is 0 0.75 and then these are your load factors for the dead load you have 1.4 for the live load you have 1.6 for your miscellaneous load you have 1.2 and for your wind load you have 1.2 these are the factors okay so if you want to change the factors you can change all of that as well don't forget this is a roof so you have to consider the wind definitely because you know most times the wind can just take off your roof so wind load is very essential in roof calculation and when it comes to um the roof truss when it comes to wind load basically you can also determine the dynamic um, wind load okay so it is also capable of calculating the dynamic wind load where is it okay this is the dynamic wind load so you can just determine what's the wind speed and what's the pressure of the wind so if you determine all that you can you know it will automatically calculate that but here everything is zero which is the default so if you have the values you can just insert them so if everything is fine you just need to click on build up but you can see i've not changed anything so i just use the default okay so then i'll just click on build point load so it's going to build the point load so everything that is here the all the load values have in here is going to you know tag everything along and then it's going to use it to calculate the load for each joint so click on yes and then click on close then here just click anywhere inside then it will drop the load so you can see 11.75 23.5 23.5 and then the last one too it will be 11.75 um i think that should be um that should be explainable you know for the pole line at this position i mean you know you cannot really see the pole line here because this is a uh -huh. so for the pole line here you only have one top cord that is distributing the load to it and which is element four okay but when you're talking about the pole line at this position, you have two elements distributing loads to it, which is element 4 and element 8. So you should be getting double loads here. But for this last one, you'll be getting just a single load. So the same thing for this last um, element too, you see, you are getting a single load and that's why you're having 11.75. So if you multiply 11.75 times 2, you understand, I think you should be getting 23.5. You can just do that on your, on your phone to make the confirmation. So that is um, very practical, okay? So if you understand the manual analysis properly, this will not be um, a, a big deal. But moving forward, this element two, you should realize that element two will be a redundant element. You understand? It will be a redundant element simply because there is no um, there is no external force at this position, and you can easily determine that you know with visual um, inspection simply because it is a um, determinate truss. Although I don't want this element two to be a redundant force, so I want to add an external, you know, an external point load over here. So to do that, you can just click on insert point load. Okay. So um, I'll pick these joints and then I'll just draw it backward like this. Boom. Okay. Then you can see the direction of the arrow. You can see it. But what is assigned here is what zero kilonewton. So just click on this particular element and then you can check it over here. So come down. Um, you can see the point load is zero, right? Then just change it to um, everything here. Let me just use um, seven, okay, or seven point five kilonewton, okay. So let's assume we have an external force over there. Then you can see we have seven point five kilonewton here, okay. So that will make element two not to be a redundant force, okay. So if I go ahead and calculate the analysis now, element two will not be cost to zero. But if there's no this external force, element two will be cost to zero. So this is basically the two ways how you can create your point load, how you can create the force. You can either build up or you just add it one after the other. 
so for example if i know all of this force to be 11.75 23.5 23.5 i may not really need to build it up i can just click on insert point load and then i will apply it just as i applied this 7.5 i think that is clear so those are the two ways you can apply the point load so if that is fine the next thing to do is to analyze your trust so just click on trust analysis then as simple as that you can see the analysis has been done so we'll click on okay all right so now i have to check my forces so just click on show forces okay so when you click on show forces you will see um the result for each one so you see element one this is what you have the element three this is what you have element two this is what you have and then you see it is applying negative or positive which tells you that the positive is tensile okay that's tension and then the negative that's compression you know this is the member force you know in choices you calculate the member forces so these are the member forces and then you have to put the the condition maybe it is in compression or if it is in tension so right now we are done with the analysis and then the next thing to do will be to go ahead with the design okay so to do that just um click on steel trusses and then um let me click on element one for example element one is in compression okay so i will pick a section type let me use equal angle and then i will pick the section size uh, let me use um 90 i think 75 should be enough let me just use 90 okay oh, 75 is good 75 by 75 by 8 okay so um now you have to check basically you know it is in compression all right so you have to check if the compression is passing the tension it is not intention actually so okay so you can see the compressive check it says the section is not okay but what about the ten the tension the element is not in tension so that's not a big deal so you do the same thing for all of these elements you have to check them you no know, because basically you know what element one is element one is um, a vertical element two is a bottom chord element three is a brace element four is a top chord so depending on which element at uh, which section size you want to use for all of these um roof components you will know the exact um, dimension you should assign okay however you can only have um you know all of these three elements you cannot have like double angle you know if you want to have a double angle you can't have double angle you can only have a single angle and let me check element three let me just check if it's um let me see use um 75 for element 3 75 by 75 by 8 okay so um what's happening over there it says the section is okay you can see element 3 is in tension you can see the tension force is 107.07 .07. and it says the section is okay for tension but it's not in compression so the element is not in compression so i think this should be all so if you also want to check your calculation sheets you can come to prepare or print and then you go to calculation sheet then you check your calculation for steel yeah click on yes okay then you see this is element one and element three okay so um those are the two elements that are actually assigned okay those are the two elements that are assigned so um you see them so this is um section is okay for element three the section is okay for element one i believe the section is not okay for the elements you know because i actually changed it to 75 so they see the section is not okay and for this particular one the section is okay so i should use 75 by 75 by 8 the section is okay so um this is exactly what you are going to do um let me to go to the floor modeling so this is exactly how you are going to analyze your steel member how you are going to you know export it from autocad analyze it put your support design and then you know do everything that needs to be done all right, so this will be the end of the course. In this course, you've learned how you can, you know, model the concrete, how you can analyze it, how you can load it, how you can design it, how you can check your modeling. Also, you've done the same thing for steel. So this is the end for this um, software, which is Quick Civil Series. If you enjoy the course, kindly give this video a like and then give my channel itself, give it a subscription. Thank you for watching.